This is a fan-generated show. If you would like to support us, please go to jamieglazov.com and also don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. All your support is greatly appreciated. Good evening. Welcome to the Glazov Gang. Tonight, Islam's hatred of dogs and cruelty to animals. Joining us this evening, back by popular demand, Dr. Peter Hammond, the founder of Frontline Fellowship. Dr. Hammond, welcome back to the Glazoff Gang. Thank you so much, Jamie. Excellent to be with you again. So many fascinating uh, programs so far. Well, maybe not that many, but we did a show on whether animals are or will be in heaven. We've done a program on how the fall affected the animal kingdom. We did a program on how the animal kingdom exposes the sham of socialism and leftist ideals. And tonight we move on. We touched on this a little bit, and you're an expert in many ways on uh, God's creation and the importance of being kind to animals and how this is biblically based. So tonight we want to talk about what happens to animals in the Islamic world and why. Um, let's just begin simply here because I, I have a lot of questions for you. Dr. Hammond, in Islam, if I am correct in my observations, there seems to be quite a bit of cruelty in the Islamic world towards animals in general. Yes, the Bible is very clear. Proverbs 12 verse 10, a good man is kind to his animals, but the wicked are cruel to theirs. And we see this in Islam. There's a tremendous cruelty towards dogs in particular. In fact, they use dogs as something bad. And yet when you think about how loyal and dependable dogs are, how dogs risk their lives and give their lives saving people. Uh, dogs are very sacrificial, very giving, very loyal, and yet there's this absolute hatred for dogs. Dogs are kicked, they are shot, they are stabbed, they are thrown with stones, they're beaten mercilessly. There's a lot of cruelty, which, and that's just what the Muslim world publishes on their own sites that they film. So there is obviously a lack of love and appreciation for God's creation. Well, absolutely. And for instance, in Iran recently, you know, we see these horrifying videos of uh, what they do to dogs and, and, and in other areas of, of the Islamic world. Um, so let's just begin here because I think that this is multifaceted and we can bring in a, a lot of issues here. To begin with, in terms of Islamic theology, um, for instance, in the Hadith in Sahih Muslim and Sahih Bukhari, it's founded in the Hadith that, you know, in Sahih Muslim, for instance, in Book 24, number 5246, it says that an angel did not enter the house where there is a dog. And Muhammad uh, uh, repeated this. Are, are you, uh, could you tell us a little bit about the Islamic uh, foundations to this? That, uh, you know, Muhammad himself commanded the killing of dogs, especially black dogs. Yes, there's a lot of irrationality in Islam. Muhammad made many outrageous statements, I mean, including that you should drink camel urine, uh, that he had gone to the moon, uh, that he could cut the moon uh, with his sword, uh, that uh, to play chess is as if you've washed your hands in the blood of swine, and that angels cannot enter into a home where there is a dog present. It's absolutely bizarre. There's so many absolutely inexplicable, irrational aspects in Islam, and the Quran, the Hadith, are full of it. And Muhammad seems to have been a very disturbed person. Uh, he, he really was uh, medically disturbed. He was spiritually disturbed. He was someone who, when he first started having his revelations, he uh, went to his wife Khadija and said, I am possessed by jinn. That's not the G-I-N, but the J-I-N-N, -N, which means spirits, uh, evil spirits. He thought he was demon-possessed, which is in fact what is his uh, nurse once thought that he was demon-possessed because his mother had used the evil eye to heal him. And so this, this man whose own estimation of himself is, I'm probably demon-possessed, he comes out to these bizarre hatreds for God's creation. I mean, God has made dogs very loyal and dependable. And to think that he would actually command that we beat them, that we stone them, especially if they're black dogs, irrational. And there's a cruelty, especially how they go about the slaughtering of goats and, and sheep for the festivals, there is no pain killing. Uh, it is, uh, they let them bleed to death. It is 
there's a cruelty in Islam that I'm amazed that the animal rights people are not up in arms against Islam because of their cruelty to animals in general. Well, absolutely. Now, Dr. Hammond, you say it's irrational and bizarre, and of course, you know, you might be being just rhetorical, and on some levels it is irrational and bizarre. But if you mention, for instance, demons and that there's something spiritual here, what I want to get to is perhaps this is not bizarre and irrational at all. Because if there are demons involved, if we do believe in good and evil, and if there is an entity uh, as Christians that we might believe in Satan, then perhaps there is an interest that an evil power might have not in waging war on creation, not just in abusing women and killing Jews and killing Christians, but also going after other elements of God's creation, right? So I want to get to this here. Um, so, so let's just begin with this here. Hypothetically, and as we've said, if, if, there is, if we are Christians and we do believe in a battle between good and evil, um, and dogs are so loyal and so loving, let us hypothetically say as believers and as Christians, does it make sense that Lucifer would hate animals and especially dogs? Yes, definitely. We can see this by the fruit, the fruit of where people are under bondage to Satan, demon possession, animism, witchcraft, voodoo. You can see there's always cruelty to animals, cruelty to people too, of course, mm -hmm. but it's almost like they practice on, on the animals. And to be cruel to those who are weaker than us, it's an incredibly evil thing. It's to be worse than a bully. And mm -hmm. you can see how a person is in the worth of their faith by how they treat those weaker than them and those in their power and those that are not able to retaliate. So, yes, I see something deeply satanic, very spiritual. What we're seeing here is a satanic hatred for that which God has created and which God has created loyal and which often shows us up. People say a, a dog is man's best friend. Notice dog in English uh, spelled backwards as God. And there's something very wonderful about these dogs, how they are so sacrificial and concerned for their master and their neighbors and those that they consider part of their pack. So yes, I would see the fingerprints of Satan here in how his followers are so cruel to animals. And that's the biblical definition. A good man is kind to his animals, but the wicked are cruel to theirs. Right, and just for our audience, just so they know, Dr. Hammond, you are also a pastor, among many other things that you do, correct? So this is the religious view that you have as well through the Christian viewpoint. I'm a missionary, and for the last 34 years, I've been running Frontline Fellowship as a mission to war zones, restricted access areas. I've ministered, especially in Muslim areas. I've specialized in Islam. I've worked in North Africa. I've worked as far afield as Sudan, Nigeria, and the Congo, and come across Islam face up. So I've gone door to door in the Muslim areas. I've been in the Muslim homes. I've been bombed by the Sudan Air Force. We yeah. have been targeted by them. So yes, I, I'm coming at this from perspective of someone who travels in Africa amongst wildlife, and I'm someone who works amongst Muslims, and I've studied them, and I've been doing this for three and a half decades. So yes, uh, that's the perspective. This isn't just yeah. an opinion. This is a conviction that yeah. comes from many years of experience amongst them. And, and what I want to stress here uh, as well is is, uh, you know, we're always, the people who try to tell the truth about Islam and Islamic ideology, the left engages in this slander that it's somehow a hatred of Muslims and Muslim people. And I think before we continue our discussion, that this is absolutely not true, and, and your life bears it out, that we are aware that it's, whether it's thousands or tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of people born in the Islamic world that are considered quote-unquote Muslims, but they were never given a choice whether they wanted to be Muslim or not. And many of them are peaceful, wonderful people, and we love all of them. We love all people, but what we're concerned about are the people who follow Islamic ideology to to the last I, cross the last T, and then, you know, support and become compl complicit in Sharia and Jihad. But these are completely two different things. Can you touch on that for a minute? Yes, I certainly do love the Muslim people. That is why I've devoted so much of my life to reaching Muslims for Christ. And there are many people who come from a Muslim background who are now not only good friends, but brothers in Christ, and many of whom have suffered severely for choosing to follow Christ and come out of Islam. So I've worked 
long and hard to try and reach Muslims for Christ in many different ways, film evangelism, person evangelism, literature evangelism, public debates. Even right now, we're still involved in reaching Muslims and getting the, the backlash of those who, who are so angry because we're trying to tell the truth and trying to reach Muslims for Christ. Yeah. So no, there's, there's no hostility, animosity to the people, only against the ideology that keeps them enslaved and, and blinds them. We love Muslims. We want Muslims to come to Christ. And many Muslims appreciate what we have done. And also, I would also add that maybe there are others who don't have your specific mission, but of, of what I've witnessed with my own eyes. People like Pamela Geller, Robert Spencer, David Horowitz, Bridget Gabriel, Nani Darwish, such wonderful, beautiful people who work against Islamic supremacism, but they're also working on behalf of honor-killing victims and victims of uh, acid attacks and forced segregation, forced veiling. And myself, that's part of the counter-jihad movement, we are fighting on behalf of persecuted Muslim people who suffer under Islam. So it's just, it's such a slanderous thing to say that those of us that are, are in this battle somehow quote-unquote hate Muslim people when in fact a large part of our work is trying to help and protect Muslim people. Exactly. And Socrates said many years ago that the proof that you've won an argument is when your opponent starts to attack you because if they had an argument, they'd attack your argument and give facts. When they start to resort to name-calling against you, it means they've acknowledged they've lost the argument. And so right. it's, it's pretty sad that liberals never seem to want to deal with the issues. They want to rather attack the messenger. Yeah. So, Dr. Hammond, let's get back to the discussion. And this is the thing, that there's a lot of people that are uncomfortable with discussions like this. And, you know, they don't want you mentioning Jesus Christ or you shouldn't talk about Satan, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I feel, myself as a Christian, if, the, if we are Christians and there is the reality of evil and if evil is active then sooner or later these things need to be discussed whether they're politically correct or not. So my position is if there is an entity that forces Christians to get on their knees solely because they're Christians and to be beheaded, yes, I see a spiritual component there. When Jewish people were, were, had genocide perpetrated against them during the Holocaust, I see something spiritual there in the sense of evil and these things need to be discussed so I'm saying some of our audience members that maybe are not religious or have not as the Christian persuasion then not every show is going to be about this but as Christians that are facing evil in the world and first facing persecution I think sometimes and often discussions like this are important so Dr. Hammond having said that let me just say where I'm coming from why I value your opinion so much on this and your viewpoint and experience Many years ago, as a young fellow, which I guess was quite a few years ago, but I remember I was watching a video of the Holocaust, and they were showing the Jewish people being led into the gas chambers. And I started thinking, you know, there has to be a spiritual component here. It can't just be a coincidence. Because if there's God and evil, then God is not doing this. So it must be, if we believe, in, in Satan and in Lucifer's interest, to be killing Jews and to attack Jews. And we saw this attempt to annihilate the Jewish people during the Second World War. And as, as a Christian, I see that as evil. Now we see this attempt to annihilate the Jewish people again, this time through Islam. We see the hatred of Christians in Islam. We also see the hatred of women in Islam. And in all of these realms, because I study it and I'm very interested in these things, we, I think we could all explain it and we could have a show on this. Lucifer's hatred of women, of the Jewish people, of Christians. But now what this show is focusing on is arguably, it's not a coincidence that there's a cruelty towards the animal kingdom. Now I'm sorry that you're the guest and I kind of went into a little lecture there, but with my loaded lecture, you please take the torch and give us some of your wisdom. Those who hate Christ will manifest it in many different ways. There's a hatred for his name, and therefore you see the people who hate Christ, they blaspheme the name of Christ, they hate him. And we read in the book of Revelation that they slander the saints, those who are in heaven now. And you can also see how Hollywood, for example, does so much 
to slander the saints, to slander those who are real believers, including those who are in heaven now. The, the saints of long ago, our, our ancient fathers, our spiritual forefathers, uh, the heroes of the faith, the martyrs, the reformers, the people who have given their lives to the faith. They did not love their lives unto death. And so you can see another mark of, of Satan and his people by how they slander God's people who have been faithful, those who have a track record of faithfulness, and they take God's name in vain. They use the name of Christ as a swear word. So we can see the fruit of those who hate Christ, the damage they do to God's creation, the hatred they show for God's loyal, loving, and dependable parts of creation, such as dogs, who honestly show us up in shame. If we were as loyal to God as our dogs are to us, then we would be better than we are. But many people are not even, they often use the term of dogs as though there's something bad about them, and yet dogs in many ways are more loyal and more dependable and more self-sacrificial than we are, and yet people treat them as though there's something wrong. So yes, I see in Islam, as I see in the New World Order and in communism and Hollywood, a hatred for Christ, his people, and his creation. Right, and, and we know that, that evil, it hates innocence. And I think it's no coincidence that we see the infanticide, we see the sacrifice and killing of children by Hamas and by Islamic Jihad, that it's absolutely no coincidence that children are also a target, correct? Oh yes, especially when you when you think of the targeting of children. Some people are, of your listeners and viewers may have seen the abortion matrix, an excellent film made by Eric Comberg, where he documents how many of the abortionists are also Satanists, Wiccans, and members of occultic covens. And uh -huh. he shows how there are actually some abortion uh, clinics, abortaries, where they're exactly the same people as the people looking, uh, running the local covens and witchcraft Satanist dens. And so, yes, there is this desire to sacrifice what is most innocent, such as children made in the image of God. I, I do see an occultic picture through this. Those of us who look at the old Roman Empire and think, blood sports, how could they have been so evil as to have actually gone to see people being killed in the arena? Well, those who hate God love death. And we see it today too, is that not in our Hollywood tradition now, people think that washing blood spattered horror films is entertaining. Well, we also have blood sports today, do we not? And we also have human sacrifice, such as an abortion. So I think we might be a more bloody society and culture than even the Roman Empire was at its worst. Thank you, Dr. Hammond. Let me ask this, in terms of halal uh, in Islamic law, uh, you know, we know that it's, you know, there's quite a bit of sadism and viciousness involved in this. Um, you know, the animal's neck is sliced it's suffering and agony, bleeding to death. Uh, in the Western tradition, meanwhile, it's more humane. There's more humanity. Uh, the Judeo-Christian tradition, the foundation uh, that it inspires here and sanctions of, of lessening the suffering of the animal. Um, so we have these two different images here of how these two different traditions deal with this issue. What would you say to that? Yes. The, one takes no delight in the death of any of God's creatures. We are not vegetarians. Uh, since the fall, uh, the eating of meat has been allowed. Well, actually, for human beings, the uh, eating of meat has been allowed since the flood, uh, okay. and Noah was particularly allowed afterwards. Uh, we do not blame the carnivores for eating herbivores. There's a creation order, and uh, we see that. And, but all the same, we would never want to cause pain. We'd certainly never want to be cruel or torture animals. And yet in Islam, we see under halal, they require this bloodletting, which makes the animal die a long and painful death. It, it is cruel. And so I oppose Islam on many levels, but especially on this, that it is cruel to animals. And people who want to support halal food are not only sponsoring Islamic jihad, and Islamic Dawah, which is their missionary evangelistic uh, aspects of promoting Islam, because halal foods have a certain amount of um, money that has to be paid to get that certification, but also job reservation for Muslims, unfair uh, employment practices, because a Muslim has to prepare and package the food that's halal, but also that we're funding evil, and when it comes to animals, that it's cruelty. So yes, I believe it's vital that, that we oppose Islam on the cruelty aspect. 
Thank you. So let me just follow up on this a bit here. Uh, in terms of this halal slaughter, we know that there's this chanting to Allah uh, and, and a tremendous cruelty here. And I think it could be fairly be said that there also appears to be this, this sadistic impulse, this, this lust almost for the suffering of the animal in these rituals. Uh, what, what would you say about this cruelty and this, this malice that's involved in this? Those who hate God love death for sure, but there is, there is a cruelty. And of course, this brings another aspect in that because in halal, the animal has to be killed by a Muslim with prayers being made to Allah at time and this is actually dedicated to Allah. This means that this is food offered to idols. This is a matter that was dealt with by Paul and Corinthians. So when you're dealing with halal, you're also dealing with food offered to idols and you're dealing with cruelty, job reservation and a financial scam. Thank you, Dr. Hammond. So let's look at some of the hypocrisy, the double standards in terms of the left and Western activists. Uh, for instance, I mean, we know that, you know, if somebody is seen, let's say, eating a ribeye steak or eating meat, that there's a lot of activists out there uh, who would yell at these people. And yet these same activists are completely silent. You do not hear from them in terms of the issue that we're discussing today. What's up with this hypocrisy and this shameless double standard? Double standards and cowardice. They've got a yellow streak down their spine. If they really cared about animal rights, they would be opposing Islam, which is one of the biggest abuses of human rights in the world, if not yeah. the greatest. Yes, I would say it's cowardice, double standards, and it's inexcusable. Dr. Hammond, in terms of the Shahada, the Islamic profession of faith, uh, in many respects, you could say that uh, it's an anti-Christian statement in and of itself because it's a rejection of the Trinity. It's a rejection of Christ's divinity. Uh, and, you know, there's a rejection of, quote-unquote, the third person. There's no third person because there's only one God, and that's Allah. So in this rejection of the Trinity, we see a very anti-Christ and anti-Christian message. Am I correct? That is correct. And of course, because they deny the Trinity, they also deny that you can have unity and diversity. And that is why they are so intolerant of opposition, disagreement, and it goes to a totalitarian oppressive system where it's top down. This is the way it's got to be. Because in the Trinitarian tradition, Christians have come up with separation of powers, legislative, executive, judicial branch of governments. We have up and lower houses, we have checks and balances because we see in God's government that he is our king, he is our lawgiver, he is our judge, he will save us. God can centralize all power on himself, but we cannot because we are corrupt, we are not sinless and perfect like God. And therefore you see in Christian societies that believe in the Trinity, a decentralization and a, a separation of powers, checks and balances. You do not see this in Islam because Islam centralizes everything because of the Unitarian view of Allah. Thank you. Our time is up, Dr. Hammond. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for all that you do and the truth that you speak. And of course, thank you for standing up for animals and for dogs and, you know, fighting against, uh, you know, cruelty to animals and for telling the truth about the ideologies uh, that engender and spawn such cruelty to animals. So thank you very much for all that you do. It is a privilege and it's a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And thank you, our audience, for joining the Glazov Gang. Please remember, the Glazov Gang is a fan-generated show. We are only here because of you. If you like this program and appreciate what we talk about, please support us at jamieglazov.com. And do not forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel of the Glazov Gang. We'll see you on the next edition of the Glazov Gang. Good night.